Good morning. Welcome back to Why in the Morning. We are not done with the show yet. You have just finished watching Barry Moses' interview with a wonderful artist, and I like his name, George Bush. Next time I shall be na yeah, naming our kids after presidents is so interesting. But right now, Tuesday Entrepreneurship is continuing, and if you want to talk to us, please feel free to do so. And you have to go to our social media handles, which are right there at the bottom of the screen, and put hashtag Why in the Morning, and then hashtag Tuesday Entrepreneurship and also at joy underscore mochache if you want to direct a question to me do remember that today is a day we focus on business people people who have you know found ways to put food on the table and also kind of trying to teach us how we can do the same thing if you're interested in business as well so karibu sana and let us welcome mr joe on kale thank you very much for having me karibu sana Sante. yes we're glad to have you Thank you. Okay. And so when we were chatting a little bit earlier, uh, I found out something interesting about you. You told me that you used to be a lawyer and then uh, you did a little bit of, you're still a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get rid of. Um, yeah. You, yes. you can't undo that. You can't undo it. it. Yes. Exactly. And you did the, a legal practice for 10 years and then turned into an entrepreneur. Well, uh, essentially, I'm still a lawyer. Yes. Uh, as yes. I'm corrected that. Uh, and... Uh, I'm more into corporate law as opposed to, or boardroom lawyer, what you could call that, okay. as opposed to litigant. Lit I'm, I'm not much into litigation, so probably you're not, we will not meet along the corridors of justice uh -huh. <laughs> or in courts or something like that. Yes. Uh, yes. And I'm still doing that. You're still, oh, you're still uh, practicing. I'm still practicing that. That's amazing. Yes. Okay, yes. that's yes. good. That's good um, because I find that interesting. Maybe before we can start talking about your particular entrepreneur venture, yes. we can just, you know, let our people know why you had decided to stop or not stop, but maybe why you started becoming an entrepreneur. And also because what I know about uh, people who have a different degree, let's say a doctor, um, yeah, it's difficult for them to drop it and then start something <laughs> else. So I'd like to see where you're coming from. Where does that come from? In part, I think it's because of, um, I believe the future belongs to those people who are capable of uh, diverging. You know, if, if, if you stick to the profession that you went to school, uh, yeah. to, you know, if, if you're still in the profession that you went to school for, then you're not growing as an individual. Mm. There is need to diversify. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just stick to one thing. Okay. Uh, move, see what else is out there for you to do. And I think the future belongs to those kind of people. Mm -hmm. uh, there are very few people Mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. and think of anyone uh, that have succeeded because of doing what they went to school to do in fact if anything uh, most people have the, are doing other things other than they did and yes. i'm not saying that you cannot make it mm -hmm. in life if you stick to if you're a lawyer if you're a journalist it's good you know to practice so that you don't end up uh, wasting your career yeah of course but can you think outside the box can mm -hmm. you see where you can apply your skills right. on a different field okay. as opposed to the one that you went to school or the one that you trained to you oh, trained I for i see okay and so yeah you you're basically essentially just saying cast your net a yes, little bit yes, wider as wide as you can yes as wide as you can cast your net as wide as, wide as you can Perfect. and you never know how many fish you can catch <laughs> it could turn you into a millionaire you never really know and I'm, I'm glad that you made that choice but now we really need to understand a little bit about your past before we start talking about your business that is known as Hebis Logistics yeah. there's a little bit of work that you did in South Sudan yes. that I thought was quite interesting um you were you did co you did editorial work for the daily the uh, daily nation in Sudan I, I, I think like um, like many journalists mm -hmm. and uh, like many many and a number of journalists are lawyers mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, yeah it's a normal thing for and some actually, weird reason I, and that's weird because yeah. I started with law and stopped on ah. my third year of law <laughs> you see so that's what happens I think <laughs> many lawyers are either journalists or they have passion for journalism yeah. or many journalists are either lawyers I, I think because we are too wordy in, yes, in too many case. words. Exactly. Yes. So, um, uh, yes, I did work in South Sudan. Rather, I still do consultants' work uh, okay. for different organizations to okay. date. Okay. Uh, but then again, I felt that I've stayed out there for quite a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. there was need to come back home mm -hmm. and invest back mm -hmm. at home. I see. As opposed to coming back at home and uh, looking for a job or getting employed. Yeah. Uh, you know, at some mm -hmm. point you feel that you have worked too much for, for institution or other people and you need to start one which is your own. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up in entrepreneurship. Okay. Yes. I see. And lastly, uh, you also did something for the UN agency, that's a FAO. 
as a humanitarian sort of uh, work that you did. I don't know if you're still participating what, in that. Yes, yes. U United Nations mission in South Sudan, or what they call UNIMIS, um, essentially is donor, is a benefactor to many organizations that are working within South Sudan. Okay. So what it does is uh, mm -hmm. you identify a project and then they, they kind of delegate other organizations to, uh, to, to work on those projects, as okay. opposed to them working directly. So they're more mm -hmm. of benefactors, mm -hmm. right? So where now I came in is at implementation stage. Hmm. So I was sort of a liaise between uh, FAO and these other organizations, mm -hmm. uh, more uh, uh, in, in, in uh, you know, ensuring that mm. we, we, we are going through the whole process of, uh, of, of making sure the project that they, have, uh, the, 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 that they are running are completed. So may it be monitor and evaluation, may it be coming up with the uh, legal parameters within which a particular project is going to run. Right. Yes. And also implementing and make sure that the project yes. actually yes, does go ahead. Exactly. From, from the it doesn't just stall <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> from, from the conception stage to the very end. Perfect. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. And so it looks like you're a multifaceted man. There's so many faces and pages to you. Either you're a humanitarian, you're a lawyer, you're a journalist, <laughs> you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> I don't know what else you pull out of the pocket, wow. but <laughs> you <laughs> can keep going. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah, who, who knows? knows? Watch, watch, the space. watch the space. Watch the space. So you're giving time for more. Well, I'm, I'm open to any other opportunity that might come. That's great. Yeah. And so let's talk about the, uh, the great opportunity that's working for you right now, which is Hebis Logistics. Yes. Yes. Um, maybe you can tell people what a courier service is, because Hebis Logistics is a courier service that actually works with parcels, um, whether small or bulky, right? Correct. And before we go deeper into that, let our viewers know what a courier service is. Uh, essentially, it's movement of, uh, of goods. Okay. Okay. Simply. Yes, simply. It's mm. movement of goods from point A to point B. Okay. So what happens is, uh, if, for instance, today uh, at Y two five four Studio, you want to send uh, something to Nakuru or Gilgil or Naivasha or any other place, all you need to do is place a call to Hebis Logistics. Okay. And uh, they will come over. Mm -hmm. Pick whatever it is that you want to send from here. And in the next day or four uh, or four hours, it will be to the other destination. So essentially that's courier service. That's a courier service. But then service. again, uh, we are looking at it at different levels. Uh, mm. There are things that we can be able to, especially for us, service, what we do, is, these are fast moving goods. Right. Fast moving goods. Okay. Uh, you mean quickly? Yes. You know, I'm saying so because if, if, if you have uh, things that you have bought from abroad, say mm. China, and you want them to come over, mm -hmm. We can still do that for you, but mm -hmm. it will take a long time. Right. So our specialty is in moving fa uh, goods that are moving very fast okay. from point A to point B. I understand. Yes. And there are, um, a, now that we know what a courier service is, there's a number of places that your offices are based. There's one here. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's Gilgil. Talk more about where uh, you you tend to, where, where you've tended to spread your wings into, <laughs> I guess, whichever so the, 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 area. The, the, the mother company is based in Akuru. That's the mother company? Yes, the mother okay. company. The is HQ? Nakuru. Yes, the HQ, okay. so to say, uh, at Resma Plaza. Right. But what happened was we realized that Nakuru interacts a, a, a lot with Nairobi, business-wise. Uh, in the sense that anything that you find in Nakuru, it originated from Nairobi. Yeah. So naturally, then uh, it came to pass that our clients, uh, you know, uh, we'll have to, uh, to, to we we'll have to, to get clients from Nairobi uh -huh. for purpose of transferring goods to the other side okay. and from Nairobi, from Nakuru to this side. But mm -hmm. we have towns that are along the transit line. Mm -hmm. So you have Gilgil, you have Naivasha, you have um, uh, Gilgil, Naivasha, mainly those are the main towns. Right. Uh, of course we have Lemuru on the way and other uh, satellite towns within Nairobi yes. that we're operating in. Mm -hmm. That's and so on that whole, on that uh, line, as you're calling yes. it, you tend to just uh, happen to drop them as you go. We, we have we have uh, pick and drop centers. Okay. We have pick and drop as, as drop centers. Right. So essentially, what will happen is uh, we have small offices that people from Gilgil can go and drop whatever they want mm. uh, to to send over to Nairobi. Mm. Or people in Nairobi can go to our offices within Nairobi and drop whatever they want to send over to Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Then one of our guys will pick them up 
and within two or three or four hours or within uh, half the, the whole day, with, you know, it depends. We can have a specification. For instance, mm -hmm. if you want to have your, if you want to have your parcel delivered in the next three or four hours, mm -hmm. we can do that. But mm -hmm. you have to tell us. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want it to be to arrive at your destination uh, before tomorrow, you tell us. So we, we have customized our services to suit you, our client. I see. Yes. Wonderful to suit us our client. And we'll talk more about uh, suiting clients and Correct. satisfying clients Correct. in such a way that they keep coming back because that's essentially what makes a business successful. Correct. Yes, Lakini, let's talk about the inception of this Hibis Logistics. <laughs> yeah, because you know you've done so much in your life and I feel like um, <laughs> I feel like you didn't even fear. I, I feel like you didn't second guess yourself because like I'm saying, there's so many things you participated in in your life that I feel like opening a business is just one of the other things. But you know, for a lot of our viewers, starting a business can be quite fearful. Very can true. be quite scary. Very true. And so those are some of the things we like to talk about when, we, when we're discussing the conception of business and how you felt when you started off. Tell us. <laughs> I was hoping you would not ask that question. Really? Yeah, for, for, for a simple reason. Okay. Seated here, I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you when the idea of logistics, such a logistic company was born. I cannot look straight into your eyes and tell you, you know what, I, 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 I considered A, B, and C, and then I decided, let me start a logistic firm. What I can tell you, though, is um, uh, I identified gaps Mm -hmm. within Akuru, specifically where I told you the mother company is based. And um, I looked around, you know, just moving across the street. Nakuru is relatively a smaller town compared to, yeah. compared to Nairobi. So most people who are doing business there are mm -hmm. either medium, uh, mi medium sized enterprises. You know, mm -hmm. we are talking of SME, we are talking about mm -hmm. uh, uh, a person who is running an electronic shop around the corner. We are talking about someone who is running a stationery across or a small pharmaceutical company yeah. well and um, I discovered that most of these people are not able to transfer goods from Nairobi mm -hmm. like I told you the transaction between Nakura and Nairobi is that Na uh, Nairobi is the home mm -hmm. of any commodity that you can think of okay. whether it's the ch whether uh, we are talking of chairs whether we are talking of books whether we are talking of medicine mm -hmm. So, most of my clients do not have capacity mm. to send over or, or get a lorry to or a pickup mm -hmm. or any other, you know, of course, yeah. yeah, to send them over because mm. uh, the logistics cannot allow them to do so. In mm. any case, you can imagine someone wants to send two boxes or three boxes, you know, it, it wouldn't make financial sense for them to come over with their car or the way to Nairobi yeah. to pick two or three, four cartons. And uh, of go books back and again. go back to Nakuru. So I identified those gaps. Right. And that's, that's what made me, if, if, if I can call it uh, the, the conceptual stage if, uh, or, the, or the, the germane reason that I started the courier service, mm -hmm. because those are the people that I wanted to reach to. Okay, uh, well understood, well understood. And so you identified a gap in a particular uh, city or town and you decided to work on that. Correct. And you guys, Tafadali, there, the social media handles, hashtag why in the morning, hashtag choose entrepreneurship. What are some of the gaps in some of your towns and cities that you as a young person would want to fill in? We're trying to get your mind rolling like an entrepreneur. What are some of the things you wish um, you see are missing in your town and area where you feel like you could start a business with? Start your morning thinking like that let's continue um, so when it comes to identifying gaps and everything like that I think that's a very intelligent way to begin a business right. and you know when 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 this happens there's challenges there's ups and downs where there's some things you've learned along the way that you wish you knew in the beginning are there some things you've done which which you which you just said oh man that was a blunder <laughs> yeah you yeah. don't have to tell me exactly what it is but you can just tell me the experience around it yeah, it's, you know it's a uh, it's been a learning lesson. It's been a learning lesson. Uh, the, the things that we thought from the very beginning that we, we, we had them right, uh, only to find out that no, uh, the, the, this was a wrong move. Yeah. So we had to go back to the drawing table and rethink yeah. on, on, on what we need to do. And we do that always. We do that always. Uh, perhaps at the, at the beginning, one of the challenges that we had was we thought when, you know, when we were starting, I think we undermined the, the market. 
we felt that uh, having a uh, a single vehicle maybe ca can work <laughs> for us. I need to realize that no, it wow. doesn't work that way. And then again, uh, uh -huh. initially when we were starting, mm -hmm. at the back of our mind we knew that you know it's move around in the morning uh, or, or in the evening, collect parcels, yes. uh, put them in the vehicle, send them over to Nairobi, yes. and the Nairobi team will do the same and then send them over to the other side. Yeah. We know it doesn't work like that. doesn't work that way. It doesn't way. work like that because uh -huh. there's a client who will tell you, S -s -s some of our, uh, our, our, our some of our anchor clients are, are lawyers, and you know, partly by virtue of my profession. I see. Uh, and so, of course, legal documents yeah, have yeah, to go yeah, back yeah, and forth. Yeah, you know, forth. they have to go back and forth. Right. They have to go back and forth. Right. And uh, and and sometimes it's they have to, that has to be done within hours. Okay. There's a document which is to be Nakuru High Court, let's say by two. Yeah, yeah. So essentially, that means that you have to find a way to get it to Nairobi for stamping and signing and return it back to Nakuru. High Court. Okay, and make sure it's there before. By on time. Before to, yeah. So, so you see, that's why I was telling you what we normally, what we did, we realized that we, we have to carve, so to say, uh, our services to suit particular clients. Right. The, 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 those who don't mind, for instance, a pharmaceutical company will tell you, I need these and these and these, and you need to pick them from point A, B, and C, mm. and I need them by Wednesday. So mm -hmm. you see, they have given you a leeway mm -hmm. of time with, within which you can, you can, you know, you're not very much in a hurry. Right. As opposed to those who want you to deliver their goods and services. Today. The, today. Right now, yeah. in the yeah. next couple so those of are, hours. So those are some of the lessons that we've picked along the way. Yeah, I see. Um, that, that you needed more cars. Exactly. <laughs> more exactly, drivers, too. Exactly, more drivers and more cars. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Go on, go on. Yes. So that's one of them. Uh, another one is uh, that um, you you really have to be very, very, very careful with how you handle uh, clients. Uh, okay. I, I think more than, I, I, I'm not undermining handling clients in any sector. You, you, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, they, they're the ones who make the business run. Yeah, but okay. you saw, it sounded but like it's again, something so for important. Us, yes, for us, uh, for us, it was very important in the sense that, you know, security because we're dealing with people's goods you understand so you you, you have to ensure that um their their goods are well secured yeah okay no yeah. gaps yeah a slight mistake <laughs> my nothing training. yes and, and if you're living in a smaller town like the one we're living in Nakuru, yeah, yeah. Which, which is relatively uh way smaller as compared to nairobi mm -hmm. uh you, you realize that uh we, we, we do not have many people who might be providing the same services within mm -hmm. Akuru. Mm -hmm. So if you make a mistake, okay, if you mess up someone's goods or commodities or whatever it is you are transferring, probably word will get around way faster. So if, 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 you, if, you, if you error, mm. it means the next client, chances are mm. that they will know. Mm -hmm. okay? mm. So you, you have to be very careful how yeah. to handle your yes. clients because yes. it can come back to yes. your company's exactly. name. Exactly. And I've understood that and I kind of want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of Nairobi and Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's the, the way you've brought it up is you've made it, um, I've understood you to say that clients must be satisfied with what they're getting. Yeah. Otherwise, it comes back to you. Yeah. It spoils your name. It does. And being a small town, as Nakuru is a small town, then there are not many companies that are doing what you're doing. The yeah. competition's not too much. And so it comes and ruins it, it, it is yours. There, but not in the scale not in the scale of Nairobi. Yes, not in the yes. scale of Nairobi, Correct. I mean. Correct. And so yes, it can yeah, detrimentally just oh, ruin your whole business. <laughs> Kabisa, Kabisa. Very true. Yeah. Very, very true. Yes. And, and, and so and, what uh, are some uh -huh. and then you after that you could tell me some of the I guess the, the, the on, good on, things on, on about the challenge. I, I I think the the first challenge that we had and which for some reason we didn't think through was mm -hmm. that, uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with this. Uh, growing up when your mother was sending you, uh, mm -hmm. depending on where you grew up, mm -hmm. uh, my mother still believed that the only detergent for washing is Omo. Oh okay. yeah. So, uh, so, sorry, I don't know <laughs> that's okay. So if you're, no, being sent for, if you're being sent for yeah. a different detergent, they'll tell you, and I don't know Omo ya, Ariel, or you know, something like Ile that. Omo okay? nini. Or go and buy Ile Blue Band, yeah, mm, Prestige, yeah, prestige. Or something <laughs> like that. You, you understand? I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and, and I think that's, uh, that's, that's the thing about Kenyans. We do not move away from 
the people that we are used to. The, so we, in this industry, we have had big time industrial players, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, the big boys in the industry. So for us getting into the market, the challenge that we had was, uh, uh, you know, introducing ourselves because people have, had never heard about us before. Yeah. Uh, how do we convince them that their goals are secure with us? Yeah. You know, so that process mm -hmm. uh, was quite tedious, and it took us time before uh, we could get hold mm. on, on, on the clients that we had. But right. I'm glad that we did it. Yeah, Fair yeah, enough. definitely, and that's one of the memorable challenges, I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah, was yes. learning yes. how to, yes. and yes. yes, sometimes I, you know, and when it comes to business, and I still feel this is important because you are a man that's doing business in different cities, I really want to talk about the difference when it comes to competition because you've said when it comes to Nakuru, your particular career, um, uh, what's it called, Hebis Logistics, does not exactly have too much competition as it would have in a city like Nairobi. Yes. And yeah. I consider that to be a pro, a good thing, a positive thing for Nakuru. Correct. Um, yes. And so when it comes to people who are interested in leaving the big city to yes. now try and go to smaller cities to do their biashara, what can you say about it? What, what would you say are the things that are different apart from uh, less competition? How can you encourage people more? What are some of the pros? Put it shortly. Um, um. You know, it's, it's it's not as easy as I made it sound. <laughs> Nakuri in itself has got its own challenges also, which, <laughs> which made it a little bit hard for us to penetrate. So I see. Uh, it's not as easy. But it's perhaps not. I think for me, what worked for me is, uh, like I said, Nakuri is uh, relatively small. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, at the same time, um, uh, because, you know, I, I was brought up there, uh, uh, I've lived there for quite a while. Uh, yeah. So there's also that homeboy mentality, so to say, yes. because... Uh, I can walk into an office and I know so many people. That mm. worked in my favor, I think. That mm. worked in my favor. Um, but for a new player who is coming into smaller town or mm. any other new towns, because like the way I did in Nairobi, for instance, mm. uh, I, 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 I think you need to do your feasibility study on the market uh -huh, very well. Definitely. Very well. Mm. Very well. Do your because feasibility study. Exactly. Be because you need to understand, uh, you need to know the players, uh, other players that might be existing, yes. what their weakness is and yeah. what their strength is. Of course. Uh, so that, I, I, I do not think uh, uh, you're going to approach uh, a client and tell him, you know, uh, you, I know you've been doing this business with uh, so and so <laughs> so I want you to stop working with him and come and work with me at this cost a cost which is similar to the one uh, the, the service which has been provided for okay you, you know by other the other players so you uh -huh. have to look at maybe the costing the pricing mm -hmm. uh, your efficiency in delivery mm -hmm. you know there are myriad of issues that you need to consider a first before yeah yeah before you, right. before you get into it hey that's very interesting. And um, I hope none of our youth are getting discouraged. Please don't feel discouraged. <laughs> Entrepreneurship. It's, it's not my, it's not my It's all your fault. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart, very but sure. for the strong hearted man. It's not an easy thing to, to, to how do you say, deal with. But yes. we're here to encourage you guys to do so because then again, we all know our, our wonderful Kenya is uh, struggling right now with employment. So we have to find ways to put food on very the table true. and close on our backs, right? Very true. And take your family members if we might. Very true. Yes. Very and true. so in conclusion, what are some of advice, for example, that you would give for a young person? Because now we're not talking pros and cons anymore. Yes. <laughs> Simply starting a small business. Um, what are some of the ideas you can give someone who is <coughs> listening and would need to hear from someone who is doing well? Uh, I, I think you need, to, you need to assess your capability. Assess yeah. your capability? Yes, yes. How uh, fast? Please. In this sense. Uh, an idea, anybody can have an idea yeah. on how to go about it. I, I, I believe every normal human being at one point or another an has thought of doing something. Mm. Uh, in reality, though, mm. you have to consider uh, the possibility of you going through with that business to the very end. Like and that. whether you can be able to withstand the challenges that will come. Because I promise you, mm -hmm. there will be challenges. Of course. Uh, I think the secret lies in uh, being able to be knocked down because you will be, oh, yeah. but standing up and moving forward. Again and again. So every time you're drawn down, you, you, you stand up, sit on the table and rethink through, okay, and come up with new strategies. 
probably if you can come up with counter strategies. Go okay, back to the drawing board. Think through uh, uh, from point A to point Z. Yeah. And then, uh, but this is the thing. What works for me, I think, is I look at the end picture. Yes. Okay. Yes. The very end of where I want to be. Mm. And then what I need to do mm. to get to that very end wow. that I want. And yeah. then now the starting stage. Okay. Of course, in between the challenges that you might face mm -hmm. and how you might mitigate those challenges for those that are mitigatable. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, uh, the capability of starting. Okay. Once you've thought through, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, if your thought process is clear and vivid and you're convinced that you can go through this yes. without, uh, or, or if there will be challenges that might pop up, they will be minuscule, then yes. go with it. Yes. Go with it. And they say it's not really about money, it's about, it's about the idea. It's about the idea. So mm. think through very well. Think through very well. Yes. Sit down, assess your capability of yes. actually going through with this um, business. And if it doesn't work, get up and do it again. Yes. Go back to the drawing board and do it again and again. And also, I think um, maybe trying to find something that you're something that you might connect with your interest because then again yeah. waking up every morning to do something you have no interest in at all yeah, is it, really it is, difficult it, it, <laughs> and you might do it with a lot of Strain. anger yeah and yeah. just <laughs> yeah. so and yeah find, find, at the first knock right yeah find that thing and follow Mr. Nkeo's advice I think it was perfect advice and unfortunately we do have to wind up our show Fair yeah. Fair Did you find that we discussed everything or was there something you'd like to throw in? Uh, pretty much covered most That's of it. That's great. Yeah. I'm glad but about that. But for those who might be having uh, uh, any other question in that regard, mm. they can also get me uh, on Twitter at John Kale. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's your camera. Please yeah. look into it and say all your social media handles. Well, not many, but you can <laughs> get me at, at John Kale. Uh, okay, that is, that is it. Yes, it's okay. Me, I'm at Joy underscore Mochachi on Twitter only. Nice. <laughs> to go for nice. more when it comes to social media. But this is Y254 channel. You can find them absolutely everywhere. Social media handles are down there. Coming up next is another interview by our new presenter, Alex. I hope that you guys do enjoy. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope you've had a good time and enjoyed and learned something from the discussion that we have had. Do stay tuned in. My name is Joy Mochachi. Find me on Joy underscore Mochachi on Twitter alone.